Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Out of Diagnostics. We have an interesting one today at a local shop here. 2007 Lexus RX 350, 190,000 miles. Uh, it's on its second engine, probably because the oil cooler lines blew. Um, common issue. The customer complaint now is, uh, this was a, you know, a while after the engine swap, is stalled out. It would restart and install out. It was towed here to the shop, and what they found was this fuse right here, 25 amp. I don't know where the fuse box cover is. That's the EFI fuse. It kept blowing. Um, it feeds basically everything in the car, including the fuel pump. And they said this relay, the brown relay, fuel pump fan number two relay, kept clicking. Um, at one point they did get it to start and run on the original fuel pump. It ran for a minute, blew the fuse. So they're like, hey, we're gonna replace the fuel pump. Okay, put in a new fuel pump. Replace the fuse, car started and ran for five minutes. Then the fuse blew again. <laughs> and they said this uh, resistor over here, it's a fuel pump resistor, so there's two speeds for the fuel pump. We'll take a look at the wiring diagram soon. Uh, this was getting, like, really hot. Like They measured it with a temp gun and it was like 400 degrees so they weren't sure if that's correct or not. So we'll have to check the current draw and you know this should be this is going to be a current monitoring seeing if there's a short circuit somewhere on this EFI circuit. So we need to pull up a wiring diagram make a game plan of how we're going to track this current without blowing too many fuses and see if we can pinpoint this issue. So first step before getting too excited, you always want to do a full health report. Doesn't matter what car, what it's here for, it's just part of the process, just do a health report. So we have a P0230, fuel pump primary circuit. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's not really that important, but we have the saved, so especially for a shop, um, when you submit the invoice, it's you have to attach a health report so you have to do that anyways wiring diagram so here's our fuel pump okay there's a fuel pump resistor that's what they said was getting really hot there's our fuel pump relay then there's this circuit open relay and the fuse that's blowing this EFI number one 25 amp, so we have to focus on this. It's hot at all times, and it feeds the load side of the EFI main relay, and then once that closes, this whole tree is fed power, and then from this tree, we feed the load side of this circuit opening relay, which is the fuel pump on off, and then that feeds this fuel pump relay, which is kind of misleading, um, has two positions. One, the current goes through the resistor and then through the pump, and the second one goes straight to the pump. So it's like a two-speed fuel pump. Either you're going through the resistor or just, you know, straight to the pump for a higher speed. Um, okay, so we want to set up a current measuring device. Let's, let's pull out the 25 amp EFI fuse, install some jumpers and an amp clamp, and use the Pico scope to monitor current over time. You know, first we'll do key on, see what the amperage is. We'll try to start it, see what the amperage is, see if you know it spikes to something crazy. Um, and then, you know, if it does, if we see something weird, we can start isolating the circuits. We'll focus on the fuel pump circuit, see how much current the fuel pump draws. You know, that's my game plan, so let's get started. All right, so here's the setup. We've got two little jumpers installed in place of the fuse, and if we want to avoid blowing fuses, I just have a 20 amp circuit breaker here, so if this goes over 20 amps, it'll click, um, it'll cut off the circuit, and then to reset it, we'll just have to wait for it to cool down and re-enable. So amp clamp, the current's going this way. One volt is gonna be 10 amps on the amp clamp. 
So PicoScope is zeroed out. Let's fire it up and see uh, how much current is passing through the circuit. All right, got the laptop here so we can turn the key on and see, okay, there's some current going through there, less than 10 amps. Let's fire it up. Okay, it's running fine. Look at those pulses right there. Up to 20, up to 20, up to 20, up to 20. And they said that happens when the relay's clicking. That relay is clicking. <laughs> okay. Very neat. So I bet those overcurrent spikes are exactly what's causing the fuse to blow eventually. So now we have to look at this fuel pump circuit. Um, oh, stalled out. Went up to 20 amps there. And that's it. Very cool capture. Let's save that. All right, so from all the symptoms and this waveform, what would you guys uh, say is the problem? Or where should we focus on our next step? It does seem like there's a short to ground somewhere along the line from that fuel pump relay to the fuel pump, right? Because, you know, the fuel pump should never draw 20 amps. I know that much. And the fact that when this relay clicks to the full on position bypassing the resistor, so let's see here. There's our fuel pump, there's our resistor. So I assume when the relay clicks here, we see these big spikes. These spikes right here. You can see you, you can even see the fuel pump little humps there. Now what happens here? I think the relay closes, you know, 20 amps in the car, just it just can't keep running. Keep in mind the resistor is unplugged here. We can try plugging the resistor in, but since it heats up so much, it seems like there's a short or a partial short to ground somewhere, you know, from here to the fuel pump. Now, there you have the fuel pump exposed. Very easy check. We can just unplug this connector and check for a short to ground um, right from the relay. I think that would be my next test. Well, we can measure the current of the fuel pump just standalone without the car running uh, and then you know, and then unplug it see if there's a short to ground. Alright, so first check test light from battery positive to one of the fat pins on this fuel pump speed control relay and the one that lights a test light has to be the one that goes through the fuel pump to ground. So now let's unplug the fuel pump and see if the test light stays lit or goes out. That'll tell us if you have a short circuit on that wire somewhere that's adding an extra load to our EFI fuse. So okay, that's unplugged. test light is still lit brightly. How about that? Fantastic. Okay. So, suspicions are correct. So fuel pump is unplugged. Let's get the test light from battery positive now to this green wire coming, you know, I want to check it going this way. So if we pull the relay out, we unplug the resistor, unplug the pump, then we're basically narrowed down to this little tree here. If there's a short to ground, that's what we're focused on. Alright, we're at the fuel pump. I have a known good power here and ground, so test light works. Now, at this connector, the green wire comes to this pin right here, upper right. So, get that positioned. Will there be a short to ground? Place your bets now. Nope. 
no short to ground. Uh, the other wire should be a good ground, so that's fine. Okay, how about that? What are we missing? So initially, I thought at this fuel pump speed control relay from battery positive, I thought that was shorted to ground. Well, that's a variable because I don't know which pin is which on the relay. That's kind of important. Uh, apparently this one must go to the fuel pump. And we can check that. We can supply power to here. Right? Plug the fuel pump in, and if there's continuity through the pump, then the test light should light up. Right? I mean, maybe I'm on the wrong pin altogether. Nope. <laughs> what are we missing here? Is it one of these? Okay, maybe it's this small middle pin. I, I assumed it was one of the fatter ones. Let me unplug the pump, see if that light goes out. <laughs> this connector is uh, slightly painful. Test light went out. So, looks like the middle pin goes towards the fuel pump. These two must be the control, and the two fat ones must be going towards the resistor, or something like that. So what did we just determine? The pin that goes directly to the fuel pump must be the middle one the uh, copper colored one and then the other two fat ones I guess three and five one would be the power feed and five would be going through the fuel pump resistor again we can easily check that by leaving the test light in here from battery positive so for example, that's lit up, that's not lit up. When we plug in the resistor, that should continue, or, you know, connect the path through the fuel pump and our test light should change on one of those pins. Okay, another very interesting finding. Let's go to the resistor itself, it's unplugged. Let's check these two pins for short to ground. There's a white wire and a black wire. So black wire, no light, look at that bright light on the white wire. What does that mean? Let's look at the diagram one more time. So on this fuel pump resistor, it's unplugged. Fuel pump relay is unplugged. And we just proved that the white wire is shorted to ground. Somewhere in here. That's it. We're, we're down to this leg. So how does that explain the symptoms? So whenever this relay clicks the low speed, uh, that's drawing a lot of amps and then when it clicks to high speed the fuel pump is supposed to be energized full speed but the current's actually backfeeding through the fuel pump resistor to that shorted you know short to ground pretty insane okay so that pin right there at the fuel pump really now we know which one that is that one's not supposed to be shorted to ground the white wire at the resistor is not supposed to be short to ground. We have to find that short to ground. So we're actually getting very close. All right, so before we go searching for the short to ground on the white wire, let's make the car run reliably and measure the current on the EFI fuse. Um, so how do we eliminate this leg and that short to ground? Well, at the fuel pump relay, it's disconnected. I just want to connect, you know, we don't care about the control. I just want to jump the feed pin 3 to the output to the pump which is pin 4. Um, that should drive the pump at full speed normally 
the resistors out of the picture, short to grounds out of the picture. So I have another fused jumper wire installed right here. So from the feed pin to the middle pin, um, let's fire it up. We've got the amp clamp zeroed out. Yep. Get the Pico scope set up. Okay, so make sure that's starting at zero. Yes, key on. I might have the fuel pump disconnected. That would help. Okay. So let's see, key off. Key on again. There you go, beautiful. About 10 amps. Pump's running at full speed. Awesome. That's our known good. Amperage goes down to zero. So I'm going to save this, and then we're going to find that short to ground on the white wire. All right, final step of the diagnosis here is locating this short to ground on the white wire that goes from the fuel pump relay, the speed control relay, to that resistor over there. So, easy place to install a one amp test light pair is right here. So I have it jump from battery positive right to that middle pin, which is short at the ground. And now we just gotta do wiggle checks. Do visual inspection, wiggle checks, and keep watching these test lights they flicker we're home free so I mean where does this harness go kind of goes here 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 then it looks like here up above and over to the fuse box. All right. There are no intermediate connectors in the way. So again, this part might be might take a little longer than the initial diagnosis because we can't really split the circuit because there's nowhere to split it. We just have to you know heat and vibration in metal brackets. So if this engine was replaced, is it possible the harness could have gotten a little pinch somewhere? It goes in here. It definitely goes in here. It goes over here. Then it goes up. right here. The test lights are staying nice and bright. So I'm going to keep looking here but hopefully we'll find the, uh, the short circuit. So for short to ground circuit location tracking test lights and an amp clamp. Amp clamp is your second weapon of choice. In conjunction, they are very powerful. So if we know if the harness goes from here, up and over to here, let's put an amp clamp on the harness right in the middle and see is the current going this way or is it shorted somewhere in the first part of the harness. So 1.1 amps, I didn't re-zero the amp clamp or anything. All we need to do is unplug the test light and see if the reading changes on the amp clamp. That's all we're interested in is the change. Look, 0 0.2, 1.1. That's our one amp, so it has to be going to here. This way. So we can put the amp clamp, you know, on the somewhere over here to see if it's dropping down to here 
We can put the amp clamp right here, maybe. Let's uh, let's try it out. We gotta do the next easiest thing. All right, so I'm on the harness right here. It's gonna be hard to see because of the glare. About 0.2. If I unplug my test light, did anything change there? Let me reposition this a little bit so the clamps are around the entire harness. While well, I was trying to position my clamps and get the harness out of the way a little bit with my clamp, but keep in mind, always watch the test lights. Always watch the test lights. And they went out and now I don't know if I can reproduce the problem. There it is. And let's see. <laughs> there, that's the money shot. So I'm just touching this harness right here and that short the ground is disappearing and coming right back. So let me show the shop owner this and uh, we'll do the final victory lap here. We'll find that short uh, right in the harness. <laughs> Alright, so when I was showing the technician here what the issue was, we actually spotted the root cause of the problem. When I was lifting it here, and the short goes away, um, there is indeed something poking the bottom of the harness. See that right there? Let me show that on camera. Let me, I'm just going to lift the harness up off of that. <laughs> Look at that. It's a sharp, self-tapping screw. Wow cut right into the harness. Now where does that come from? Is it from here? Is it that bolt? Let me take this fender liner out, do a quick visual, see what the heck is going on there. Because that's, I don't think that's factory. Wow. That is a sharp screw. <laughs> so I took it out. Now there's a hole in the fender, which shouldn't be there to begin with. And right next door is a nice plastic little place where the bolt should have gone. So that's where they had the aftermarket one screwed in. But, and why not just, I mean, I guess the fender line is a little ripped around the factory hole. But now, why not just use that one? Oh, the bolt is still in the factory hole. How about we just unscrew that and... Uh, Put the fender liner back on the way it's supposed to be. Insanity. So, I wanted to open up the harness here just to see the extent of the damage because we want to fix this long term. And the only wire that got compromised is that white wire going to that resistor. That's surprising, but that's quite the big gash <laughs> uh, just in the white wire. So, I'm going to seal this up with electrical tape, wrap the whole harness up, reconnect everything, uh, should be good to go. Alright, let's do a final verification of repair. Relay's plugged in, resistor's plugged in, roll the scope, fire up the car. Okay, for some reason the amp clamp was a little finicky. There we go. So, less than 10 amps. Steady. The relay's not clicking or anything. The car's happy. So I'm going to clear the codes out. And uh, that's it. So this was... You really need a process for this one. You have, you have to be accurate. So, step one, determine, yes, we do have a short to ground on what circuit. Then, finding the short to ground took about as much time as, you know, the first step. And then, you do have to remove insulation from the harness, check for damage, remove the root cause of the problem, which was a really sharp self-tapping fastener. I don't know why would someone would just go right into the fender. <laughs> to install a stupid fender liner, but 
Um, quick and dirty, I guess, but that, that was the consequence there. That's it. Appreciate everyone watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.